Hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff. Another daily word. Making this word on the 12th of August, where there's been now the appointment by Joe Biden as his running mate, a lady from, uh, spent time here in Oakland, California, near where I live, uh, Kamala, Kamala, she wants to be called, Kamala Harris. What I want you to do is talk to the Lord about her because we are that point in this country, in this uh, very time, this election, that we have to be discerning the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the wisdom to tell you and me who this person is. What is the Spirit behind this person? God loves her wants her to be saved. She has a background, as far as I can tell, in Hinduism, um, from the Indian heritage, and then also Jamaican, um, Rastafarian, whatever goes on down there. Uh, and listen, only the Holy Spirit knows whether she's a believer or not. What I do know is that we are dealing as it says in Ephesians 6, 12, we deal with principalities and powers and all kinds of uh, wickedness in heavenly places. So we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. I have no wrestling match with this uh, lady, Senator from California. All I would tell you though is spend some time with the Lord alone, with his Holy Spirit and to discern the spirit that she operates under. There's evidence for this because look at 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. The word says, And no wonder, for Satan himself becomes or transforms himself into an angel of light. You and I need not be mocked by someone who's, quote, charismatic, happy, smiling, laughing, whatever her persona is, and otherwise being forceful and tough. And what we need to do is look behind the facade. Look behind the facade. I would even ask you to do that for Mr. Biden. I would ask you to do that for Mr. Pence and Mr. Trump. Ask the Lord, look at this political contest as a spiritual battle. I believe it's a battle between light and darkness. I believe that if you support late term abortion, some even say that she went so far as to say that if a child was actually born from a failed abortion, that decision, this was of course the, the comment of the current governor of Virginia also, that decision as to whether that little child should live or die should be left up to the mother. That's called infanticide. Who could be behind that? Yeah, it's gotta be the, the angel of darkness, the one who wants to kill and steal and destroy. So I would just ask you, one, register to vote. Two, ask the Lord, who is the candidate? And this applies to your very local election also, running for school board, city council. Ask the Lord, what is the spirit motivating that person? Who is that person? We can do that without judging. We're not judging their eternity. I pray God willing, all these people I've named will um, be in the kingdom. God wants everyone in the kingdom. He is hoping that every single soul will come in and repent, turn to him, turn away from the world and the wickedness of the enemy and come into his kingdom. And so this is not about judgment, but this is about discernment. The sons of Issachar had discernment of the times. You and I are called to be discerners, including from those running for office. The people that 
by and large, there were exceptions, but by and large, the people that, that founded this nation of the United States humbled themselves in constant times of repentance. Constant times of repentance. That's how they started this nation. They started it with days of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. There's a, a wonderful story, true story. It took place in Philadelphia. This is even before the Declaration of Independence. This was, I believe, in 1774. There had been um, the Boston Tea Party. Britain sent its warships into Boston Harbor. Those delegates to this very first constitutional, well, it wasn't a constitutional convention. It was a, a um, really a, a convention of colonial leaders brought together to pray and to talk and to discern what, what could be done to stop the tyranny from this um, king in England who was interposing all these very rigid and, and horrible taxes um, just binding the, the colonists to a, to a life they, they had no vote about, no freedom. When they assembled, I think it was in September of 1774, they learned of the blockade in the ships in Boston. Someone had uh, ridden a horse overnight and, and alerted them from all the way from Massachusetts down to Philadelphia, took a day or more couple of days maybe and the word came to those delegates immediately they got on their knees and they prayed and they prayed and I think I can find it it's Psalm 35 let's see if we can find this ah plead my cause O Lord with those who strive with me Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear. Stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. That's exactly what happened within weeks and months. Those many ships loaded with soldiers departed. The spiritual war was won with prayer, with humility. That's what we need to do today. In this election, there needs to be days of prayer, fasting, and repentance. And it begins with you and me. And it begins with you discerning the spirit behind this new vice presidential pick for Mr. Biden. Look behind the, the nice smile. Look behind the color of her skin. That's irrelevant to this issue. Look at the spirit that has motivated her and Mr. Biden who also agrees in late-term abortion. So I would just say this is the, a time of choice. Will we be a sheep nation? Will we be a goat nation? Will we restore the covenant which was the foundation of this nation? The godly covenant, believing in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the choice. And the angel of deception comes disguised as an angel of light. God bless you.